halfway through Steve's comments, I thought, I've, I've forgotten what I'm supposed to say, and now I'm a little bit worried about him. Can somebody get him a cup of coffee. He's going to need some caffeine. Fruit juice. <laughs> Fruit juice. Um, early in Steve's comments, he talked about himself as a people farmer, and I've liked that metaphor a great deal because the work of a teacher who makes deep connections into communities and, and provides that level of energy to inspire and motivate change in students. That truly is what a people farmer is, Steve, and thank you for sharing that with us. This room is filled with people farmers, and so we're very, very grateful to have you with us today. Please join me again in thanking Steve for his comments. And also thank you, Mary Linda, for being with us today and for all that GSK does to make North Carolina a better and better place. Uh, we have a special announcement to add as a part of this part of the agenda and decided to add it to this meeting really because of who you are. In this room are a lot of people, farmers, who are making transformational change possible in your communities. And we thought if we're making an important announcement, we want to do it with the people who've made so much amazing work around the state. So joining me for the next couple of minutes in this announcement will be uh, a couple of uh, people that I admire greatly and that I think you do as well. The first is during the last gubernatorial election, uh, our current governor ran an ad that included his teacher from Ragsdale High School. And I thought when I saw that ad, I'm going to love working with somebody who will put his high school teacher out there to make an endorsement about what a good kid he is, I guess. Um, e ever since he's been in office, uh, Governor McCrory has made teachers and teaching his top priority, and it's consistent in his budget proposals. Please join me in welcoming the 74th uh, governor of North Carolina, Governor Pat McCrory. And joining us up here will also be someone else who's also quite remarkable and a distinguished leader in North Carolina. I met him a few months ago for breakfast, and it was at his invitation because he wanted to talk about teachers and what can we do to better support and motivate and honor teachers. I'm so pleased today to be able to welcome to our stage the U.S. President of Pharmaceuticals with GlaxoSmithKline, Jack Bailey. Jack, please join us. Thank you, Jack. So, Governor, I understand that you have an announcement you'd like to make today. Well, we have, uh, first of all, I need to give you a heads up, uh, an update on Mrs. Revels, who was my Ragsdale High School English and Drama teacher. Uh, she is now chairman at the age of 81, the chairman of Indian Affairs for the state of North Carolina. And uh, she called me up two weeks ago on my cell phone and she said, Patrick, uh, you were invited to an Indian Affairs Committee next week, and you cannot attend, apparently. And I'm very disappointed, and that's unacceptable. <laughs> and I said, well, Mrs. Revels, I'm in Asheville, then I'm in Boone, then i got to go to Charlotte. There's no way I can make it to Raleigh back in time. Patrick, I expect you to be there. And I'm never mean like this. I never have been mean. I said, yes, you have, Mrs. Revels. <laughs> And she said, Patrick, I expect you to be there. I was there the next week. Mrs. Revels will always be my teacher, and she always orders me around. And at 81, I just want to let you know, she is still a productive teacher and still has an impact over me. And to be chairman of Indian Affairs for the state of North Carolina, she has got as much energy level as she did in her 30s and 40s when she was my teacher. And uh, so y'all give Mrs. Revels a round of applause. Um, Ruth Revels. Um, the announcement we have today, and I think uh, Mr. Bailey is going to give more details on the actual amount of this announcement, but let me just tell you what the issue has been, and all of you know this. I'm not telling you anything you don't know because you've told me this and employers have told me this, and that is this. We have a lot of jobs available in North Carolina, but there is a skills gap in North Carolina and in our nation, frankly. And the skills gap have to do with STEM type jobs at all levels, from two-year graduate degrees to four-year graduate degrees. We are having a tough time filling certain jobs in the state of North Carolina, from engineers to medical to accountants to uh, mechanics to electricians to people who make things and build things and grow things. 
and innovate things. And uh, if we continue to have that skills gap, we're going to have a tough time recruiting new jobs and keep jobs that we have in North Carolina. And that means we don't have major employers, and that means we don't have major taxpayers to help pay for our education and roads and everything else. And that means we don't have jobs for our graduates. So it's a, it's a circle that we're going through. So if we're going to remain competitive with not only the rest of the United States but the rest of the world, the best way to be competitive is we've got to somehow convince more students to take advantage of their STEM skills, and we need to help teachers do that. And one thing that I've learned is I had my teaching degree out of Catawba College a long time ago, back in 1978, and back then I was taught to lecture, to stand up and give a lecture. And I remember my first student teaching at North Rowan High School. I thought I had an hour lecture ready to go, and I ran out of material after about seven minutes. <laughs> and I remember my student advisor, Mr. Um, uh, uh, the, my North Rowan teacher just sat there and went, you're out of material and you still have 50 minutes to go. And I, I realized right then, this teaching is tough, but it's even tougher today because now the best methods is always at the lecture mode. And I'm seeing that at all levels of education. And one thing that we've all learned from you, the teachers, is there are there different ways that we can better grab students' attention and gain knowledge in STEM teaching? And we think there's a way to get more of your input to develop new methods to teach STEM, to support teachers to make it happen, and then reward people in making that happen. And then the student benefits, because it all gets down to the student. And we want them to have good careers and good opportunities in their life so they can make the best choice. So I'm very proud to announce the concept of the STEM Accelerator. And this is going to be a privately funded and supported by the governor's office event to help teachers develop new ways to teach STEM. And think out of the box. By the way, note to staff, never follow someone with a straw hat. <laughs> I mean, what a, what a presentation. He is thinking out of the box on how to grab the attention of students. And we have got to do that because you know, when you watch sitcom TV at night, you don't see a lot of people talking about math and science. You don't see the engineers. You don't see the technicians as characters. So we need to look for some role models, and we need to see the advantage of this and to use the soil. And some of the examples you give is perfect. And um, I just want I admire for what many things you said, and thank you very much. So. It's my honor to announce this concept. And Jack, why don't you talk about uh, more details? And so I didn't read any of my notes, by the way. They're, get rid of the notes. Um, I feel like the teacher at North, North Rowan High School again. Well, thank you, Governor. Jack. And uh, let me start, first of all, by thanking the Governor for his wonderful leadership of the state that is so dear to us and for your commitment to STEM education and making sure we continue to progress. So thank you very much for your leadership. We have a long way to go, and we know that. We thank you all. Let me add, uh, Steve, phenomenal presentation. Um, thank you for doing the work you do. Um, you're getting it done every single day. So thank That's you very, very much. That's yeah. why we're here. That's what we're all in. Absolutely. And let me, th let me uh, thank all of you, um, whether it's uh, Ms. Ravel in the governor's life or uh, Dr. Gary Allenstein, who was my sophomore teacher who gave me my first course in biology, uh, or Dr. Thomas Glover later on, who uh, inspired me to go into the study of genetics you do is literally shaping the future of this state and this country. Thank you for your hard work, your creativity, your perseverance that inspires and frankly prepares people like myself to be standing here now as the head of a, a multinational pharmaceutical. So thank you very much for everything you do every day. Now, just, just briefly, for those of you not as familiar with GlaxoSmithKline, we're a company that, in the life sciences industry, over 150 years old, actually. Uh, we've been in North Carolina for 45 years. We develop medicines, vaccines, and consumer health products that hopefully every day help us achieve our mission of helping patients do more, feel longer, and, uh, and, and feel better. It's, uh, it's something we're very passionate about, very much like your passion about education. We have seen the impact that we can have, whether it's the eradication of diseases that used to uh, strict, uh, afflict this country and the state, uh, or whether it's the passion that is needed to tackle the, the diseases that remain uncured. But we're very, very passionate about it. We stand at a time that is 
has phenomenal potential. You've heard about the mapping of the human genome. Uh, that has unlocked doors for potential disease eradication that we never thought possible 15, 20 years ago. But much like the science has evolved, we know that the training of those future researchers or business leaders in the life science industry has to progress too. And that's why we want to build upon our nearly 10-year partnership with Tony and the North Carolina New Schools Initiative that has done such breakthrough work to, uh, to be, frankly, the, the first sponsor and challenge other companies to be uh, uh, contributors also to the STEM accelerator that you just heard from Governor McQuarrie. This is exactly what is needed to be able to make sure we move forward in terms of the training of our students around science, technology, engineering, and math, so that hopefully some of those students come to work at GSK and help develop that next cure that can benefit not just North Carolinians, but frankly, people around the world. So uh, certainly from our standpoint, we could not be more excited, Tony, with your leadership, what your team has done over the 10-year partnership, and certainly proudly want to share with you a uh, check for $1 million to support the new STEM Accelerator. This is adult money. I like it. <laughs> a big check. We need a very big bank, don't you think? <laughs> For a very big check. Jack, thank you so much and to everyone at all that you do to help us move forward and all the partners in this room move forward. There's a number of representatives here from GSK. Would you all please stand up so we could recognize you? It's always been my experience with the company that it's not just about the company's philanthropy, but it's about its people. And when you look through the decades, and I see Sam Houston out here and others who have such a long history with GSK, it's been about how executives bring extraordinary intelligence and support, especially to our public schools, and we couldn't be more grateful to you for making that possible. Governor, also thank you for your leadership, and we will be proud to support your administration in this work and the partnership going forward what it's important for us to know leaving here, and the reason we wanted this announcement to take place with you all is, this investment is about collaboration. How do our public schools, our universities, our community colleges, and our business and industry work together in new and different ways? And you are already shining the light for that way. The partnerships you've created in your communities that are a part of this conference is absolutely remarkable. And uh, so we really today are making this announcement with you for that reason. The investment is largely, as you heard from the governor, going to be to support his leadership around STEM and that of his staff, focusing on uh, a deep investment in advancing higher standards in science and mathematics, helping us to significantly improve the supports for teachers and administrators. Uh, great, hardworking teachers and administrators deserve exceptional, world-class professional learning and development, and we're very dedicated and to improving that over time. Yes. Yes. And then the last substantive piece of this is, as I said, uh, the relationship with our four-year institutions in helping to exploit the knowledge they have, tap that knowledge and experience, and continue to harvest that into relationships with our districts and to the local schools of which you lead. So congratulate yourself on this investment. Thank you so much to GSK. Thank you, Governor. It's an honor to have you with us today. I just want to say the ideas are going to come from you. And we're trying to integrate business with teaching more and more so you can understand each other's pressures, understand each other's needs, and understand each other's environment. And then the students win, because that's what it's all about, is the students and trying to help them have a great quality of life in the future right here in North Carolina. So many thanks. A great corporate partner. And this is a very, very important part of this process. Yes. So thanks to all the teachers. Being a teacher is a heck of a lot harder job than being a governor. I know that from my experience at North Rowan High School. And I just want to thank all of y'all and the administrators for the hard work and effort. But we've got to continue to be competitive and think out of the box because look how much teaching's changed this past 20 years. It's going to continue to change. And those who adapt to change and plan for the change and implement the change and think out of the box, even going using old techniques with new world endeavors and technology, we can all win. So thank you all very much. I appreciate it. Good job. Good job. I wondered if I should pick that up for you or not.